Hello, my name is Jennifer Trinka. I'm the founder of Vegan Action Waves and organizer of the Swansea and Bridge and Anonymous for the Voice Rescue. And today we were here in Swansea to uh, make people awareness of animal cruelty and animal abuse uh, with a march. It's our second march in Swansea and despite the you know, general situation with lockdown and uh, everything going on at the moment and COVID, this went really well. Good morning everyone and welcome to our Swansea Animal Rights March. Good morning everyone and welcome to our Swansea Animal Rights March. My name is Jennifer Trink, I'm the founder of Vegan Action Place and organizer of the Anonymous for the Voiceless. I have been vegan for 10 years. I'm one of those so called preachy vegans. Do you know what a preachy vegan is? Yeah. A preachy vegan is a person that doesn't stay silent in front of the animal abuse and exploitation. And it's just that. What we say is too uncomfortable and they become annoying to meet eaters because they make them accountable of their actions. We have spoken with many people here in Swansea for the past four years. That's why we are spreading around the sideways, organizing the evening at the slaughterhouses, street activism, literacy, to reach out to more people and make them think. We were all looking forward to our second animal rights march in 2020, but since last year, our lives changed dramatically due to a very contagious virus. We all lived through first time what is like to experience the spread of the COVID pandemic, and it's one of the ways we have seen. We fought COVID-19 like SARS, MERS, Ebola, and HIV, all come from animals. This is a warning that we don't change the way we treat animals. Those zoonotic diseases will appear, potentially causing more pandemics. I'm now exploiting in as many ways you can imagine. They are kept for leisure, for use as working tools. They are bred and killed to be eaten, to provide clothing for use for entertainment. We know this is not necessary. We know this is cruel, and we should not only take responsibility for our actions, but speak up for those who can't. Speak up for the victims, and we will do for any other injustice. Animal rights activists like you are the greatest of all first responders because you confront the triple in the status quo of interest, industry, politics and culture. With the rise of veganism and people opposing to animal cruelty, governments are introducing bills and laws to stop animal rights activists and peaceful protests, and to stop the distribution of evidence regarding animal abuse taking place in farms and slaughterhouses. Just stop and think. This system is built on the idea that you can humanely kill someone who wants to live. And for doing so, they constantly take these lives into existence, violating and torturing their bodies until they die in gas chambers or with a blade in the throat. And the animal user industry needs laws to support continuous torture of animals while people demanding equality and justice are treated like terrorists. One year ago, just one day before a new law passed in Canada, a fellow vegan activist, Liga Russell, was killed while she was bearing witness to the suffering of pigs outside the slaughterhouse. We were all shocked about this tragedy. And with a heavy heart, we must not allow vegan to die in vain. This is time to put more effort, more time, more accountability, and more demand for the end of using or killing animals. We are animal rights advocates. We are simple people doing simple things. We are students, parents, children, working people and pensioners. The majority of us used to consume animal products, used to see no money in animals for human gains. Then we look at the food. 
animals are not objects, but certain beings, and they deserve the greatest rights to live their own lives. We do respect someone who do in survival of rights. We stand in solidarity, we talk to people, we bear witness of animals going to the slaughterhouses. We educate and simply the people the truth in a peaceful manner. The best approach we test that improves the working, here in Sonsi, is making people accountable for their actions. Be clear and be prepared to not shoot the food in the brutal food animals go to move. To life but unapologetic is the key to speak up for the real victims, fight racism and give animals their right path. We are now approaching our fourth anniversary in Sonsi, second year in Brazil with the animals to the Volta, an animal rights organization that has been leading this effective form of activism for the past five years worldwide. We all hold an abolitionist stance against all formal and human animal, animal exploitation and promote a clear and direct animal rights message. Anyone can be an animal rights advocate. The more we are, the more we can maximize our impact and make sure our message is loud and clear. Please come along and talk to us to see how we can get involved. Now, I want to leave you with a quote from Frida Russell. I don't know if it does any good, but I know who in our pain does not do it. One of our organizers has been involved uh, with vegan achievements since uh, the group was founded. She is vegan and animal rights activist, and when she is not involved in our uh, events, she, she enjoys volunteering with uh, animal activists. Hi guys, um, I've written a poem today. I based it on a lot of well-known um, British sayings. Um, if you don't know them, I'm hoping it will still make sense to you. Um, I've called it an idiom for carnists. So, it's not. There's no skin off my back to wear, fly and wear animals. They're pelts, leather, boats, following old habits like drones. They cost an arm and a leg. You can't force me to change my purchases. Their eyes, hearts, brains, the cotton commits the blood stains. Another string to your bow, another arrow through them, forgetting they exist, who they loved, who they miss. Kill two birds with one stone, maybe hundreds, maybe more. Our traditions, our spoken word, leads us to blindly repeat the absurd. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Why do we put them in baskets at all? Their children, their existence, forever up against resistance. Curiosity killed the cat, but ignorance killed the planet. Animal lives discarded by blindness, never room for kindness. The ball is in your court, never a true word was spoken. Use your money like pliers, cut open cages, break wires. Parking up the wrong tree, there'll be no trees left on the planet. They burn up like a cigarette. Will it happen more? You bet. Actions speak louder than words. Now it's time to listen. Take up arms by lowering your knife. End their strife. You can't judge a book by its cover, but you can judge it by its actions. Close the book, write a new script. It's time the table is flipped. Back to the drawing board, that's where we need to go. Rewrite the rules, make animals free. Who are we to choose? What are we? A penny for your thoughts, why not a penny less to spare theirs? Every purchase making change, it's time to rearrange. Hit the nail on the head by taking away the hammer. No one needs to die today, you know you can find a way. We're treading on thin ice, we tiptoe on broken glass. It's all a drop in the ocean. Let's throw a spanner in the works, you reap what you sow.
Hi, I'm Josephine and I'm from Bristol Animal Save and I'm here today to support the Swansea Animal Rights March. Um, it's a magnificent march with lots of people coming together because as we all know the planet is facing extinction We're one second to midnight and now is the time to do something So I was here representing the animal save movement because with animal save there's animal save Climate save youth save and youth climate save all are recruiting at the moment and we're offering an opportunity to everyone from whatever point, of, every point of view they come from to be part of it and be included and being part of making the change because everyone needs to do something about making the world a better place. Our next speaker is Josephine Robinson. Born in 1958, she became vegan at 58, 57 years old and an animal rights activist at 58. She is the co-organizer for Bristol Animal Save and co-country liaison for the Animal Save Movement. Hi, hello Swansea, how are you today? Looking good? Um, yeah, thank you for very much Jennifer for inviting me and it's great to be here. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I had a problem buying a ticket from the ticket machine because it was in Welsh and I couldn't turn it to English. But anyway, we should start with a note of positive, positivity, which is when I started being an activist in vegan in 2016, it seemed like there was nothing happening and now everywhere you go it seems like the world is coming alive and people are realizing not only that there is work to be done but that, that every one of us can, can do something really valuable every day. Um, when I first went vegan it, I, I was never expecting to become an activist but when I finally went vegan I, I wanted to find something more to do. I wanted to do something. I wanted to be part of the change, but I didn't know where to start. And I was fortunate, fortunate enough that a friend went to Ontario, went to Canada, and um, she met Anita, and she went to a vigil at Fearman Slaughterhouse, where last year Regan Russell was killed. And that friend suggested to me that I could join the SAVE movement. And for me, that was a really natural fit because I read the uh, Code of Conduct and it said that we're peaceful and love-based. And that was, that was kind of a fit for me. And um, the SAVE movement started with just the, uh, as you probably know, for those of you who don't, the SAVE movement was started by Anita Crying in 2010 when she was walking past the slaughterhouse with her dog, Mr. Bean, and she saw these huge trucks full of panting, gasping pigs in the hot Toronto sun and in the freezing winters. And she decided that someone should bear witness. And she was very influenced by Tolstoy, who says that when we see a suffering one, we must resist the temptation to flee, but draw closer, as close as we can to help them. And that really struck me as something that I wanted to do, but I didn't really know what to do or how to do it. Um, because I think, like most of us, when we first find out about the suffering of the animals, we post it on Facebook because we think that people don't know. When they know, they'll immediately take action. And I don't know about the rest of you, but the reaction I got was, don't put that on my page. I don't want to see it. It's upsetting. But since then, I have made lots of vegan friends and lots of activist friends, and it's not such a lonely journey, because for me, going vegan, first of all, I didn't know anybody else who was, and no one seemed to understand it, so it felt very isolated. But since I got involved with the SAVE movement, I have met, met so many like-minded souls and compassionate people, and it's been a pleasure to be on this journey with everyone. But I suppose when I first went on, the, on, on my journey, I wanted to know what more I could do. 
And there's, there's, there's a million things we can do from stickering when we're taking the dog for a walk, to lobbying MPs, to getting involved with all the many different groups with SAVE, there's Animal SAVE, Climate SAVE, Health SAVE, and now Youth Climate SAVE to try and encourage people to do the right thing and move in the right direction for whatever reason they personally relate to. And with the vigils, the SAID movement very much believes that we have a moral duty to go there, to look at these animals face to face and acknowledge the reality of their suffering and the, the brutal deaths that they are going to. And that has been really empowering for me because it's, it's the only form of activism i found where I really am face to face with the animals, really engaging with them, where they come to you for some comfort in their fear, and they sense it, they smell it, they know what's going to happen. But I think one of the things I wanted to say today is every form of activism is valuable. Everything people are doing it, we may not agree with each other's form of activism, but it's like we're all pushing one big boulder up the mountain, and we need all our strength to push that boulder up, and not use or waste any energy um, critiquing other people's activism, thinking there's a right way, because with all the evidence in history shows that what achieves that 3.5% tipping point when 3.5% of the population actually get active and start to do something and bringing about social change, that that happens most effectively when people are coming at the issue from all angles, whether it's whole food plant based diet for health reasons or whether it's uh, a vegan diet for animal safe reasons, it's all valuable because every meal that is plant-based is one less dead lamb on the plate, one less dead pig, one less dead chicken. Because how often do we hear, oh, I don't eat meat anymore, just a little bit of chicken and a little bit of lamb, and I really like cheese, and I can't give it up. But it's all a journey, and we must encourage each other and love each other for what we do, and not judge each other or ever make anyone feel bad when they're trying. So I think the message today is if you want to join the SAVE movement, we're recruiting now, just go on one of our pages or go on the Global Animal SAVE movement page. And if you want to sign up, Gordon, and, Gordon Ty and I are country liaisons and we'll talk to you and help you set up a chapter or find you one that's working or ready to join. So, um, yeah, that's it really. I haven't done a speech before. I hope it was okay. And um, the good news I wanted to start at the beginning, but I forgot my figures, was I read in um, one of the plant-based magazines that since last year, it's like either 8 million or 8 billion increase in plant-based food. And I wanted to say that that is positive, because that's just in the last year and through COVID, and maybe it's given people time to think. So thank you all, and thank you all for being here, because you're all doing something. You're here, you're on a march, you're speaking out for the animals. So much love and respect. Thank you.
the same? I know. There's this misconception that vegan food is bland, boring, and has a lack of nutrients. Oh, hi! I'm Kevin the chef. Oh, hi! I'm Kyle the chef. Oh, hi! I'm Victoria the chef. <laughs> Have you heard about all the incredible, delicious, amazing vegan food that is available these days? I'm yeah. sure you have, if you are vegan like us. But how many times have people asked you, so what do you eat? We eat everything. But we don't eat, but we don't eat sentient beings. There are hundreds of thousands of combinations that will make a delicious dish without the need to kill animals. Vegan food is not just a trend or a diet, it is a guilt-free, conscious, cleaner choice. Vegan food is for everyone. Kids, adults, elderly, fitness trainers. You can have pizza and chips and burgers and hot dogs, or you can be a quinoa lover. Animals don't care what you eat, as long as they don't contribute to their suffering and send them to the slaughterhouse. We prepare easy, affordable vegan recipes and share them all on our website www.curethechef.com to help non-vegans stitch the worst part of their diet, the suffering and killing of animals. Cooking and eating healthy is a way of life. For many people, changing their habits and finding time to cook and eat vegan can be difficult. My brother and I can offer you a range of snacks, desserts and mains on our YouTube channel. Keep in the chef. So are you ready? You can cook! for over a decade. Claire's speciality is overseeing and breaking undercover investigation and we'll be talking about the impacts of undercover investigation at HIP. Um, so just um, hello everybody and just well done for making it today in this scorching heat. Um, as a lot of you know that um, probably a lot of you know hopefully a lot of you know Animal Justice Project. But, um, I started it in 2014, in December, which seems like a hell of a long time ago. But we started off originally campaigning um, against the experimentation of animals inside uh, UK laboratories. And our focus was specifically on universities. And this is an area that I'm still absolutely passionate about. Um, we moved on from campaigning against universities and their use of animals to um, the Warfare Laboratory, um, hopefully some people know it, called Porton Down um, in Salisbury. And they carry out some horrific um, experiments on um, primates, pigs, rodents, etc. We've also campaigned against uh, charities uh, spending public funds on um, animal research, such as Cancer Research UK, uh, British Heart Foundation and others. Um, just talking about the section, I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody today um, at NPR Acres um, outside the Beagle Breeding Facility. Woo! So if anybody can get down there, I realise how far it is, that would be so good. I've spent a few days down there, I plan to go back as well. And they're very welcoming, there's so much food, there's lots of local support and it's so important um, that all of you try and get down to that camp. But it was only really uh, when Animal Justice Project started working on farm animals that we were able to um, commence the work of undercover investigations. So my role within Animal Justice Project is overseeing the planning of the investigations, working with our dedicated team of investigators, and making sure that we receive maximum coverage in media and nationwide. I also work with supportive vets, um, the central government and local authorities and any other companies involved. 
We've got an extraordinary team at Animal Justice Project with campaigns and investigations working side by side. We never ever expose a farm without following it with a sustained and effective campaign. Our investigations are chosen with care so they have maximum impact and we film mainly on high welfare farms and slaughter houses to dispel the myth that high welfare is somehow better than intensive. This puts Animal Justice Project in a slightly different sphere to a lot of the animal rights groups in the UK now. Groups that campaign for things like the better chicken commitment. So campaigning for incremental welfare measures is something that Animal Justice Project doesn't support as a strategy. We all know the horrific suffering that goes on every single day in so-called high welfare and free range farms. And all of those animals meet the same terrifying end in the abattoir. Only total abolition will do. Campaigns and investigations exposing intensive farms need careful messaging and, we, and actually are often in direct contradiction to our work. Expose to our Animal Justice Project inside farms and abattoirs across the country have reached millions and we hope have made a big impact on many lives. National news outlets such as the Daily Mail, the Mail Online, the Express, the Mirror, the Guardian, the Times, the Independent and the Ecologist have all covered our groundbreaking investigations. As well as vegan publications such as Vegan Food and Living, Vegan Life and Plant-Based News, countless radio stations and even TV. We've recorded days, sometimes weeks of footage inside so-called high welfare boiler chicken farms, possibly for the first time ever. We've installed cameras inside the UK's largest duck slaughterhouse, house, Gressing and Foods. The first time duck slaughter has ever been caught on static hidden cameras. We filmed the slaughter of high-end turkey, guinea fowl and chickens on farm, exposing the myth that slaughter on farm again is somehow better. We've carried out an extensive five-month investigation at a beef mega farm, the first time ever which launched our expired Dairy Equals Beef campaign and most recently filmed the secretive trade and slaughter of male dairy calves a time when the industry and retailers are boasting that calves are no longer shot on farm when in fact 65,000 baby calves are sent to the slaughterhouse this year that's a secret that they would rather you not know Our investigations are carried out by a brave and dedicated team whose efforts will be forever grateful for. The sites are often very high risk and involve several days and even weeks of surveillance. The downside of course is that all of our undercover investigations are very costly and we rely 100% on public donations to carry them out. But we believe that undercover investigations are absolutely vital for campaign work and to combat the myths and lies put out by the animal agriculture industry and this government. So I just want to give you two examples of the impact of our undercover work. Last year, under the Foul Truth campaign, we filmed clear law breaking inside dressing and foods. A huge slaughterhouse in Norfolk, which led to a, re a report being filed to the Crown Prosecution Service by the government. Just yesterday, I had a telephone call from the government's own slaughterhouse watchdog, the Food Standards Agency, who we briefly exposed in the media. I was told that despite clear breaches inside the Gressing and Food Slaughterhouse, the CPS have now decided that it is not within the public interest to prosecute. We filmed the abuse, the disgusting abuse of ducks, and we filmed live ducks being shackled on the slaughter line for 14 minutes when the legal, when the law says they should only be shackled for two. It was clear, clear law breaking, and it was also caught on the slaughter has its own CCTV. Companies and slaughterhouses. Companies and slaughterhouse staff know that there's going to be no consequences for actions and the only way to change what is going on is to end it. Still we need to bring the authorities to light and so tomorrow we'll be commencing an online petition to the CPS demanding justice for dressing and ducks. So please look out for it on our social media platforms and give it a share. Under our new scans campaign, which I hope many of you will have seen that was in the Times and the Independent, 
Um, we launched it just week. No, sorry, we launched it last week. Um, we filmed inside a Cheshire-based abattoir for over 200 hours. We filmed horrific suffering and abuse. Pigs having their ankles sawn into whilst hanging up and thrashing. A live piglet being thrown into a boiling water tank while still alive. And this piglet was still alive. Sheep gasping for breath after supposedly being stunned. And gentle bulls being viciously beaten with electric rods and pointed sticks for over 40 minutes in the lairage. These animals had to be shot in the chute because they couldn't move forward. They were absolutely terrible. There are no improvements to be made and we will never campaign for CCTV in slaughterhouses because the entire system needs taken down. Following our expose this year, a tiny so-called waste product, now cars from dairies, being brutalised and killed in their thousands, each year by one of the main calf killers in this country, Derek Whittle of Oakland's Livestock Centre in Shropshire. We now know that Derek and his wife have flown to Ireland. They're working potentially with um, some other dealers and some other car slaughterers. But soon after the investigation broke, um, his centre closed down, which shows the impact of our work. We continue to monitor his movements and lobby for trading standards behind the scenes to prosecute him for something that we have not yet put in the newspapers at the request of the local government. This dealer needs to go to prison and we won't rest until we've done everything we can in our power to make it happen, including considering a private prosecution. Under the same expired campaign, our five-month investigation at Berryfield's mega beef farm, where thousands of bulls lead miserable lives with no natural forage for until they are sent to the slaughterhouse of just a year old, led us to being bullied and threatened by a high-profile legal firm in London, who were hired by the carp industry's largest player, Meadow Quality. This company trades cars literally like they are pieces of meat. This legal firm sent us aggressive letters late at night, so gone 8 p.m. and early in the morning around 6 p.m. They threatened me personally, saying I was liable for the thousands of pounds loss that John Well, the farmer, had incurred thanks to our investigation. But this reaction by the calf industry only serves to highlight the importance of our work. So much so that they literally want to shut us down. It makes us even more determined to expose the trading male calves, including the export of 200,000 calves each year from the Republic of Ireland. Coming up on Saturday the 11th of September, there will be a nationwide day of action for Dairy Still Kills campaign. We'll be providing hundreds of materials to local groups across the country and we hope that Wales will get involved as well. It's really important to inform the public about the dairy industry's many victims. Our undercover investigations have led to changes, of course, such as workers being fired, practices being turned around, and straight up foreclosure. However, we really, as an organisation, push for such small changes. And if we do, it's always part of a larger strategy in order to raise massive consumer awareness and push for industry-wide change. Today I've given a very small snapshot of our work in the area of investigations at animal justice projects. Our investigators are currently in the field once again, as always, and we hope this investigation will be breaking in nationwide media within the next couple of months. Please always share our findings. I know that it's difficult to see, particularly our small to work, but the animals deserve to be seen. If anybody can afford a small donation each month, we would really appreciate it. So thanks so much to the organisers here, Jennifer and everybody else. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk about our work and a huge well done to everybody who has come out to stand up for animals because they really need your voice. Thank you.